Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Knowledge. On today's episode, we're just going to talk about buying and selling single cards. You know, because I, I have seen this question be floated around in different chats and different channels. And, you know, I don't feel it's really been addressed or given a good answer. So I'll just give you my opinion, you know, when it comes to pretty much raw cards, bulk cards, and then graded cards. You know, what's the price point you want to be at? You know, it's definitely going to be a different style video, you know, versus the collector versus the flipper. So this would probably be more of the flipper type video and where you want to be, you know, percentage wise, if you are doing the work to flip cards. My definition of a flipper, I've said before, I feel it's just somebody who, you know, buys cards usually in bulk. You have multiples of cards. You sell away your duplicates, your triplicates, quadruplicates, and you know, normally you would say you have those cards graded, you would keep the highest grade, put that into your personal collection, and whatever the lower quality, lower grade cards, you know, you would sell off in order to help offset the cost of collecting Pokemon. Because, you know, let's be honest, Pokemon can get expensive if all you're doing is buying and you're never selling. You know, it's pretty hard to grow your collection that way unless you do have like an unlimited supply of cash where you could constantly buy and never have to worry about selling but for a lot of us i do believe we are the latter where we need to sell some of our duplicates and triplicates and quadruplicates in order to offset our collections so right off the bat in my opinion and the advice that i would always give is you should always go after raw cards and bulk cards so bulk cards is not just what you think, you know, instantly when people say bulk cards, they think your comments and uncommons. That's not what I really mean. What I mean when I talk about bulk is buying collections, buying binder sets, you know, going on eBay, looking for poorly titled Pokemon lots that do have a lot of good cards in it, cards that you might personally be looking for, you know, so when it comes to buying or searching for bulk lots on eBay, I'll never put in like individual card names. I'll never put in numbers of cards. I'll just search. So let's just say, for an example, very recently, the sets that I've been acquiring a lot of cards for is Sky Ridge. So I'll just type in Sky Ridge lot and I'll see what comes up. And then when you get your results back, you're going to weed through all the you know, well-titled auctions, you should say, and try to weed out like the poorly titled. And you could do multiple different strategies. You could write in Pokemon lot, Pokemon cards, just Pokemon. And you know, and you just, a lot of times I'll just, you know, it, it is tough to search through a ton of auctions. So what I'll do is, you know, change my filter to just items ending soonest. And I'll search through and I'll do that like, a few times a week, sometimes a few times a day. It's more or less when I'm just bored sitting on the couch. I'll try to find a good deal. When I do find something that is, you know, does pique my interest or something that I do want to acquire for my collection, I'll just add it to my watch list. And that's, a, you know, another important thing. You got to have patience. It's so easy to go out and just click buy it now and everything. But when you do that, you're going to be paying, you know, whatever the market price is for that card. So if you want to start acquiring cards, especially raw cards, and, you know, we could talk, we'll talk about modern too, but for right now, I guess I'm more or less just talking vintage. But, you know, for vintage cards, you got to just be patient. You have to wait for good deals to come up. Good deals don't happen every day. You know, sometimes they're only a few a week, but just be patient and, you know, that's the best advice I could give while searching for cards. When it comes to raw cards, now, you know, raw cards are always very varying in condition. If you're buying huge lots, you got to be mindful. You're not going to get high grades. That's why pitchers are so important. If a seller offers you the ability and you catch some of these auctions early enough, you could privately message them, say, hey, can I have some more photos of certain cards, you know, ask for definitely always the backs of the cards and the obvious, you know, things you're looking for, for grading. You're looking for the corners. You're looking for the edges. It's hard to look at surfaces. That's why you have to ask them in photos to 
take photos of the cards at different angles. And then centering is the easiest thing you can do with a photo because it is what it is. You could instantly, you know, see that. So that's important to ask too. Anytime you're trying to go pick up raw cards. And when I say raw cards and I talk about grading and, you know, looking at the condition of cards, it goes back to points that I've made previous. You have to be familiar with the grading standards. And the best way you will ever get familiar with grading standards is to send away a lot of cards personally. Because when you send away cards yourself, you get to see the cards before they get sent out. You understand the condition. You can make a lot of mental notes. And when the cards do get back from grading, you will become, you know, way better at like understanding conditions, especially when it comes to the difference between like an eight and a nine or a nine versus a 10 or an 8.5 versus an eight or an 8.5 versus a nine, or depending on what, you know, gradings you use, you can go with 9.5 versus a 10. And when it comes to 9.5s, like that's where subgrades really come into handy. And you can only learn so much about grading cards from photos. You need to start physically dealing with the cards. And again, you got to start sending cards away for grading, even if it's a few. And people always say, well, what's the percentage that you try to make on raw cards? And, you know, that's a very good question. The problem is, is there's no really good answer. It's really dependent person to person. I'll tell you what, for graded cards. When you do the work, that means you're buying raw cards. You're picking out the individual cards that you believe are worth grading. You send them away for grading. <clears throat> you pay the grading cost. You get those cards back. You, you know, figure out what the best grade of that card is you're going to put in your collection. Then you have to now do the work to sell that card. At a minimum, and this is the very low end of the spectrum, you should be making at least 100% on that card. And that's all in. That's for the original cost of the card, for the cost to have that card graded, and then whatever your fees are, whatever, you know, whether you use eBay or whatever auction site you use, that final price needs to be all in. Your profit, 100%. Raw cards can start to get a little tricky because when you're buying raw cards, the turnaround time to flip those raw cards gets cut, you know, so drastically opposed to grading them. So like a tactic I have used in the past, which looking back on it, hindsight always being 2020, has never, it didn't age well as a tactic. But what I have done in the past, and I've told you guys on other videos, I personally am a Raichu fan. I've never really been emotionally invested in Charizards, so I've always looked for, you know, well, binder sets always have Charizards, but big lots, I always look for lots with a couple, like, heavy hitter cards in it that are obviously in poor condition because when you have a poor condition card, sometimes having that card graded is actually detrimental to the value that that card is going to produce in the long term. So what I'll do is I'll find like lots that have Charizards. And then as soon as I got that lot, I would cannibalize it real quick, flip the heavy hitter cards, individual, raw, still, you know, selling them raw. But the price that I would get for those cards would more or less, keep, you know, make everything that I decided to keep free. So then what that would do is the cards that I was now going to go send away for grading, I would have no initial value into those cards because by the cards that I was able to pull out of those lots, sell individual, made those cards free. So now all I really had to do was sit on my grading fees. And, you know, that's something that's way easier the stomach. Sure, that doesn't work 100%. You know, it's not a perfect world. Sometimes, you, you know, you won't find sets or lots exactly like that. And it's very important, too, for you to keep in mind, like, how much your time is worth and how long your money's going to be tied up for. Because when it comes to grading, with turnaround times right now, everything has increased so much that you just have to be very smart. You got to be very mindful. 
don't tie up money that you don't have. And if you are in the market now where you want to you know, pick up graded cards for your collection, because the price you pay for cards for collecting is very different than the price you want to pay for flipping. Because if you're going to be a collector, especially going into the graded card market and starting to acquire graded cards for your collection that you're not personally grading, because, you know, let's just be honest, a lot of people, their graded card collection, you do want the higher grades. And you want like the 9.5s or you want the 10s, depending on, you know, the sets, maybe you're looking at 9s, but you want the higher grades. So... The only way you're going to be able to pick up those grades is pay a higher dollar amount. Because when you have your cards graded, what you're more or less doing is locking in that condition of the card. Meaning the condition of the card will never get any better than what it's at. So if it's a nine, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, we're not going to get into cracking slabs and resubmit it, but you know what I mean. If that card's a nine, it's always going to be a nine. So whatever the realized value you know, the max realized value of that card at a nine is what that price is going to always be at, you know, depending on the market. It's going to be very easy to put a value to that card. And every card is different when it comes to value. You have to just do your due diligence, search recent, you know, sales, see what that card is selling for. But if you want to be in the graded card market and start collecting cards or potentially flip cards in, Flipping graded cards can be tricky. You got to be very smart about it. You really have to do your homework because there's definitely a lot of auctions out there for graded cards that you can get for a steal and, you know, make a lot of money off of real quick and do very well for yourself, but you just don't want to get hosed. And, you know, that's why PWCC auctions are so great because you do one of two things. You could really shop around. Most of the time, the high-end cards that you are looking for will be available. And depending if you're patient or not, and yeah, there's luck involved because at the end of the day, you're going to be bidding against whoever else wants that card the most. You know, you look through all the PWCC auctions, there were a lot of what I consider great values that those cards sold for. In fact, you can look at one card with the same grade that has 10 different auctions of that single card and you'll have 10 different prices. Yeah, you just want to really hope that the, you know, the one out of 10 cards of that type that you bought in during those auctions, you want to hope you weren't whoever was the guy that paid the most. And that's when you got to just know when to walk away. When do card when you are bidding on cards, if you do see the price start to escalate, or get away from where reality of that value of that card is, you got to know when to walk away and say, this card is not for me. And that's just as valuable, just as important of anything you can do in this hobby is knowing when to walk away. But with that said, if you have the patient, patience and you wait for whatever graded card you do want to come up for auction, you can sit back and probably get that card for the lowest possible cost you're going to pay for a graded card. Because buy it now auctions and cards that sit on the market for a long time, yeah, those cards will always be priced at whatever the high end of the spectrum is. Nobody pr- throws their cards out there at the super lowest. They're just going to get eaten up right away. So auctions are going to be your best bet to get the graded card that you want for the cheapest possible amount. And the only way that you're going to do that, again, be patient, wait for those cards to hit the market. And you also have to be, you know, vigilant. Do your due diligence, you know, be ready for those cards when they do come up, you know, to just go over the video real quick, real, you know, real rough breakdown. If you are buying raw cards and you do plan to send them away for grade and you do plan on reselling those cards when they get back, the number that I want to give you all in cost, and that's again everything: cost of the cards, cost of grading, cost of all your fees to sell that card, including shipping. You need to be making at least one hundred percent on that card, and again, that's the low end. There are a lot of cards out there that, if you are smart, some of them, if you're first to market, 
you can make returns that are just, you know, astronomical, way over 100%. So just keep that in the back of your mind. But also don't lose money grading cards. Be familiar with the market before you send them away. Be familiar with the grading skills. Because if you send away a card expecting a nine and you get a seven, you know, the price difference there is huge. So you gotta know condition of cards before you actually like spend the money to pick up the raw cards. Because you don't wanna break, trust me, you don't wanna go through the process of buying raw cards, buying raw card lots, going through the grading process and losing money. That would be the worst possible thing that could happen to you. And I've said it before, it's very important. People always say, what should I invest in? Should I invest in raw cards or should I invest in sealed product? And my answer every time is always both because I do believe that you should have a little bit of each. You know, I think sealed product is one, one path to go and individuals is another path, but you can't have one without the other. You got to do them both at the same time. And especially if you want to grow in this hobby and get a lot of that experience with different cards, you got to go the single route. So that's what this video is. The way I was able to personally do it is I had a little goal that I want to have a complete graded base set. And I do have one, 102 cards, and it took a while. I'm constantly having cards come in and out. I had to make a decision. Did I want to go graded? Or sorry, not graded. Did I want to go unlimited? Did I want to go Shadowless or did I want to go First Edition? And I just realized, hey, I'm going to do a little bit of everything. So I would say for the most part, my graded collection is Shadowless. It has a few First Edition cards and a very, very small amount of Unlimited cards. And eventually, it will probably all get weeded out, maybe to all First Editions or a combination of all First Edition and Shadowless cards. But by sending away so many cards, and it took a long time, and my graded base set collection is not all PSA, it's not all CGC, and it's not all Beckett. It's a combination of a lot of different companies. And the best way to learn how, you know, like the grades of cards was to send away tons of cards and have tons of cards sent back to you. And that takes a lot of time. It's not an overnight thing. You know, I wish I could say that it, that it is. And you're going to learn very quickly buying raw cards on eBay that photos don't show everything. You got to get yourself a good jeweler's light or a ring light or something like that that has a real powerful like LED light, just like the one that I've showed you guys in other videos before, because that's really going to show condition of cards. And just be smart anytime you buy raw cards. Just don't overpay because you you don't want to get burned on anything. That's why patience is such a virtue in this. If you are going to go that raw route and you're going to go the auction route, don't let like however many bids or however many bidders are on auctions blind you to the actual condition of cards. I've seen some auctions go before where you had like 20 different bidders and the cards were not worth what they were doing. But what happens is, is you get a lot of like, sometimes auctions just run away from people. You see a lot of action in it. You see a lot of different bidders. And, you know, you might think in your head, like, when you look at that auction, what am I missing? Like, what am I not seeing here? What cards here are super valuable that people are bidding on? And something very important you got to re- realize is sometimes... There are no good cards in that auction. There is no reason that it should be that much money. So please don't get caught, you know, bidding up an auction for no reason other than you think other people want it. Like I've seen it happen and I feel like maybe I have done that in the past, but so long ago that, you know, I at least learned my lesson. And never do it again. And, you know, I always try to explain to you guys like the lessons I have learned in the past before. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And when you do grade cards, you got to remember two things, rarity and scarcity. They're not the same thing. Rarity is different than scarcity. That's why pop report is very important 
because pop report is going to show you exactly how many of those cards exist. Yeah, you're probably just going to use PSA. So you're not going to really know the populations for, say, however many of those cards exist for CGC or Beckett or SGC or anything like that. But rarity and scarcity is, you know, very easy to determine in that situation because if you have a card that has a very low population report, even if there is, you know, not tons of rarity to that card, meaning it's a very popular card, in the short term, you can capitalize on the scarcity of that card because there's a lot of people out there who sometimes just want a certain card that's graded. And if you have the only one of that card available on the market, you know, you have a pretty good chance of somebody coming up and scooping up that, that card. And when you have the only one of something on the market, and because it's scarce when it comes to the graded population of that card, throw rarity out the window, you can be very successful. I wouldn't say that that's a great long-term tactic, but I've said to you guys before, being the first to market on stuff can be very beneficial, but just be smart. You know, don't make poor decisions when doing this. Like, understand and whatever you do in this hobby, don't ever like exert yourself to the point where you've, you're stretched out too thin either. And raw cards and singles does have the ability to do that if you get burned on a lot of these cards. When it comes to, you know, opening modern product and sending away cards for grading, again, I suggest doing it at a very small scale at the beginning because if you haven't sent away a lot of cards for grading, you might have the instant thought that all new product grades a 10, and that's not the case. But the only way you're really going to start to learn that and understand that is if you send away some cards for grading. And, you know, I keep saying that. Like, the second you send away your first batch of pack fresh cards and a crap load of them come back nines, some of them eights, you know, rarely, yeah, you'll get some sevens, and then, yeah, you get your tens and stuff. But once you start to realize, like, oh, not every card is a 10, that that's so valuable. You know, talk about just, like, crazy knowledge crazy value for you as a collector once you realize that you know but the only way you're really going to start to understand that not every card's a 10 is by sending away a lot of cards and i know i sound like a broken record i get it but i'm just trying to express that point to you is you need to start sending away cards you need to start getting familiar with the process especially if you want to be in this hobby for the long term and you do decide to get into you know flipping singles so that's very important. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any more questions, you know, talking about raw cards, you know, how to handle them, how to find auctions, you know, what percentage you want to make, stuff like that, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best that I can. But other than that, if you guys are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll catch you on the next video.